Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Hypothesis's Annotate This, our product roadmap webinar, talking about some of the exciting releases that we've had come out for the fall semester. Uh, really looking forward to walking through some of the different things that the Hypothesis team has been working on over the last few months to give you a solid back to school start. And then also talk about some of the features that you can expect over the course of the fall semester and the academic year. Uh, I'm Joe Ferraro. I'm the Vice President of Revenue here at Hypothesis. I've been with the organization a little bit over a year and been in the ed tech space for the last 15 years or so. Uh, super excited to be here. And I'm joined by uh, Christy DeCarolis. Uh, she is our Customer Success Manager. That's her official title. I'd actually call her our Pedagogy Lead and uh, our Hypothesis Expert. So thanks so much for joining, Christy. I want you to tell everybody about yourself. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining today at such a busy time of year. Uh, my name is Christy DeCarolis. I've been with Hypothesis for about a year. Um, I call, come from a long background in teaching. I started out my career as a high school history teacher, and then I was an instructional designer in higher ed for about eight years uh, before moving over to Hypothesis. Um, and I've been teaching with Hypothesis in my own course uh, since fall 2019. So I am just as excited as any new features uh, about any new features as any of you. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking some time to be with us today, Christy. Uh, so we just went through our introductions. I want to talk about a few things over the next 30 minutes or so. First, what are Hypothesis's 2023, 2024 product themes and what have we released and what's still to come? Talk about some resources for our partners and also for those of you who are just exploring social annotation in your courses. We've got an incredible back to school offer for new subscribers. So I want to talk about that as well. At the end, we will be taking questions and you can use the Q&A function built into Zoom and we'll try to take those either live or at the end, depending on what the topic is. So don't be shy. I'm happy to answer any questions that you've got. And with that, let's dig in. <clears throat> So 2023 has been a really exciting year for Hypothesis and our team, and especially the product. And we focused our efforts on four major themes. First is increased social engagement and finding ways for students and instructors to collaborate more actively, visibly, and socially than ever before. Next, we want to focus on wider content coverages for annotations and what types of sources and surfaces can you annotate? We also want to improve efficiency and efficacy and also continue to focus on seamless platform and LNS integrations. So let's talk about what we've done and how we've done and uh, what's coming next. Uh, what we've done so far is release daily digest emails. Uh, these were released in beta for some summer instructors over the last couple months. So if you're new to the fall semester and started to get these digests, we want to talk about the thinking behind those and what's next. For content coverage, we have really spread our wings and we're now able to cover video annotations, JSTOR content for all of our mutual JSTOR customers, as well as an exciting new integration for Bookshelf by Vital Source. Uh, for efficiency and efficacy, we are focusing on reusing annotations and driving grading improvements to allow instructors uh, more resources and more flexibility as they set up their course. And we've also rolled out some pretty exciting workflow updates and assignment improvements that we're going to dive into in detail over the next couple of slides. Uh, so the first thing that we focused on was increased social engagement. We know that the social experience is important to learning, and it's especially important when you think of social annotation. It's not social without the social piece. And we've gotten a lot of feedback from our customers that they want to understand when students are annotating the readings for their courses and responding to prompts and also want to let students know when their classmates are replying to annotations and reading those back. And so we have started to roll out these improvements. Uh, Christy, I'll let you take it away and talk about this. Thanks, Joe. So some of you who taught over the summer or who have already started your school year already might have noticed the Hypothesis email digest. I think we rolled these out maybe in late May. Um, and especially for our folks who are not using Canvas, this will be helpful in letting you know um, when students have annotated in your course. Um, so these daily digest emails come into your inbox to let you know when, again, when students have added annotations in your course. And currently, they'll give you a summary of how many annotations have been added and in which courses. Um, so. 
for the future, we are accepting feedback on our daily digest emails. There is a link in the email if you would like to provide us feedback about how these um, are helping you or how they might be improved. So we would appreciate both positive and constructive feedback there. Um, and we are hoping in the future that we will be able to make some improvements on these emails based on your feedback. Great. We were really excited to get this out this summer and we've got a way to go and your feedback is critical. So if you're receiving these emails, please fill out the survey and um, we will actually enter survey respondents into a uh, sweepstakes to win some free hypothesis swag. Uh, the second theme that we really wanted to focus on for this academic year is wider content coverage for annotations. As we all know, content can come in a variety of formats, and we think it should all be annotatable. We believe multimodal learning is the way of the future, and to do that, we need to cover wider varieties of content, whether that's additional publisher partners, additional library partners, video, and some other surfaces that we're working on for the coming year. We've had some pretty exciting releases over the last couple months. First was video annotation. Uh, so at the beginning of August, we launched our first video integration with YouTube video transcripts. Uh, these are built directly into your learning management system if you're a customer now, and you might have seen video show up on your picker. This is an amazing way to get students to focus on different resources that you're using outside of your traditional digital textbooks. As long as the video has a transcript, students will be able to actually click through and use the timestamp next to the video and have their annotations. As you can see, Christy set up a pretty great demo here on the right to allow students to talk about what they're seeing. And this is just the beginning. I'm hoping to focus on some more video content providers over the next few months. Uh, we've also taken two pilots into a wider spread phase. First is JSTOR. Uh, this is a huge library resource that so many of our customers use and so many customers around the world use. And faculty and students can now annotate over any JSTOR content through our picker. That is any journal articles. It could be their free education resources and their open access textbooks. This has been enabled for all of our mutual customers as of the first week of August. And so this may be new for you on the picker. We're happy to answer any questions you've got about this. Uh, it's a really easy way to take your library resources and bring them to life in the classroom. And we've also broadened our coverage with annotations for bookshelf for vital source. Uh, we have some case studies and we've actually have another webinar in just a few weeks talking about those with University of Texas at Austin and some other schools. But institutions who are vital source customers using their textbooks through a select number of bookstores will now see this integration as well. And the goal is to roll this out globally by the spring semester. It's a great way to keep students active, visible, and social in your text while not having to add another tool and another login. And we've seen some research that shows students are actually engaging with the content up to five times more regularly than classes that don't have social annotation embedded within them. So we're super excited about this. And then our third theme is improving efficiency and efficacy. Teachers and students, you can annotate, but you need to do things with those annotations. We want to improve the ability to take action and do things further. That could be reusing annotations in a course that you run in multiple semesters, distinguishing different types of annotations more clearly, and actually being able to copy and reuse annotations as an instructor. And so we've had, we have some improvements coming out. I'll let you take those away with you. Thanks, Joe. So I know that a lot of you all really depend on adding annotations to the document before the students have access to that document to, pro to provide extra questions or context for them, or maybe even add in some external resources for them to review as they're reading. But it's been a problem in the past that when you copy those assignments over uh, from semester to semester, or if you are using small groups in your class, that your annotations are not shared. Um, and are not copied with your course. We are working on a feature that will allow you to reuse your annotations as you copy the course or assignment from semester to semester, or if you are setting up a group assignment and you wanna create an annotation that should be available across all of the groups in your class instead of just available to one group at a time. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing that soon and we'll have more information about that. Um, as I mentioned, I think this will be especially helpful for uh, folks that are teaching larger classes with hypothesis and might have 
uh, students annotating in smaller groups. And again, if you're really doing a deep dive with your students and providing those guided annotations, which can help students under, better understand and retain the reading, uh, this will be especially helpful for you, I know. Yeah, this is one I know a lot of our customers are super excited about. Uh, we've also got grading improvements coming. What can we say about those? So there's a couple things here that I'm really excited about, and this applies to uh, Detail Brightspace, Moodle, and Blackboard users. Um, so if you're on Canvas, this does not apply to you. Uh, but for those of you that have been using Brightspace, Moodle, and Blackboard, I know there have been a couple frustrating things about the grading bar. First, it's that you can only add a grade out of 10, and that might not align with how you would like to grade the assignment in your grade book. Currently, the grade book will scale your assignment as you put the grade in to the hypothesis grading bar. Uh, in the future, we're making an improvement so that the grade point value that you enter when you're creating the assignment is reflected in that grading bar so you won't have to grade that pesky out of 10. We're also adding the ability to add a, a private comment to the student if you want to give private feedback on their annotations. Uh, next slide, Joe. Yeah, and that goes back to me. Uh, we're also constantly working to keep up with the evolving learning management systems that all of our customers use. And not all features are the same. And so our engineering team has been hard at work this summer trying to find ways to provide seamless experiences across all platforms, regardless of which LMS you're using. Whether that's using different group functions for annotation groups, storing different files within the, within the learning management system itself, or even just simplifying workflows to allow folks to do this more quickly and efficiently. Our team's working hard on this and we've got some really fantastic improvements that have come out and more to come. So what can we expect this fall, Christine? Thanks, Joe. So these are things that you should be able to see and you might have noticed um, over the past semester or so, but we just wanted to highlight them in case you did not notice. Um, so we have a couple improvements across LMSs. In Canvas, if you were using Canvas files previously, when you went to select your Canvas file, um, all of your files in your whole course would show up on one screen, even if you had them organized into folders, which was kind of messy. Now we do reflect the folders that are, are set up in your Canvas course, so you can more easily find the files that you're using your, for your hypothesis-enabled readings. Additionally, for Moodle, Blackboard, and Brightspace users, you can more easily edit assignments that have already been created. And again, this should already be accessible um, in most of your hypothesis-enabled readings now. Um, so you'll see a little edit link next to the annotation assignment name that shows up in the upper left-hand corner of your annotation assignment. From here, you can change the reading connected to an annotation assignment. Um, so say my example on the screen here is a syllabus annotation assignment. If I've created that assignment already and I want to upload a newer version of my syllabus before the students start annotating, you know, I always forget to add something in there. Um, I can click the edit button and choose a new file really easily without having to recreate the whole assignment. Also makes it easy to start over if you need to assign groups uh, later on. So these couple of, of improvements are already available, um, as well as the ability to integrate specifically in Brightspace with uh, Brightspace groups and files. Uh, next slide, Jim. And then we're super pumped for you Brightspace users out there also um, for this incoming update. Uh, so D12 Brightspace, um, there's like a pesky part of your setup where you have to paste in a URL every time you create an assignment um, with this new update, which will be coming later on. Um, you'll be able to create assignments without having to copy and paste that URL every time. It'll make that process so much simpler and smoother for you. Uh, but this isn't quite available yet. Uh, and Joe, I think I'll take it back to you. 
Great. And I know this is one our team's super proud of that we're working on deeper linking to Brightspace, which will save not just clicks, but also improve the overall experience. And uh, keep an eye out for an update that you'll need to install between fall and spring semesters here. Uh, those are a lot of the product updates that we've got in front of us, and so we're going to continue on the improvements there. So we've added video. We're going to be looking for more services. We've launched JSTOR across all of our mutual customers, and that will unlock a lot of your library resources. The power of Vital Source Bookshelf and allowing students to really use the textbooks in the way that they were designed to be done in person, writing in the margins of every single one, is going to unlock so much potential for students and for instructors. And then a lot of the back end features that we have begun to roll out are going to make it even easier to deploy than it has been before. But we have a lot of new instructors at the beginning of the fall semester. So we did want to focus on how you can get started if you need some additional help. And so we do have a back to school partner workshop series running throughout the month of September. Uh, after Labor Day, we'll have two introductory workshops at uh, 9 5 and 9 12. So that's Tuesday and Thursday, uh, 1 o'clock Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. 9-7, we'll do annotate your syllabus. This is a great way to get students used to social annotation, and everybody should be reading the syllabus anyway. Uh, we also are talking a lot about artificial intelligence, and we've got leveraging social annotation in the age of AI, talking about how you can use social annotation to keep students focused and make sure that they're really harnessing their knowledge and not just offshoring it to their friends at ChatGPT. And then for folks that are really looking to get started later this semester, we've got our annotation starter assignment webinar, which will talk about best practices from our over 300 customer universities and some of the things that folks that have come before you have done so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we do run these workshops throughout the year uh, that are available for all of our customers, and we're super excited. We've also got Hypothesis Academy. This is something that we're super proud of. Christy rolled it out at the beginning of 2023. We've got over 300 graduates from our customer schools in just the last eight months. This is a certified educator credential. You'll get a badge to put on your CV or your LinkedIn, but it's a two week asynchronous course designed to teach you not just how to use the tool, but how to use it most effectively. Design assignments that can best support your student learning. We will be sharing this deck after the call, so feel free to register for the next cohort. It is for customers only, but we're super excited to have this available for you. And then for those of you on the call who aren't currently a Hypothesis user but can't wait to get started, there's never been a better time to get started with Hypothesis. We've got our back to school offer, which can be up to 80% off the list price, depending on the size of your institution. Gives you unlimited access for all students for the next academic year. Includes some faculty workshops for your teams to get them up and running. We have waived our implementation fee, and your faculty would be given access to Hypothesis Academy, which is a great PD benefit for institutions. And so feel free to reach out to the sales team at education at Hypothesis to learn more. And we'd love to have you join us this year and make your classes more active, visible, and social. But with that, I will turn over to the Q&A. Uh, looks like we got quite a few questions in there. Christy, what should we go for, with first? Uh, I'm so sorry. I my Zoom just randomly quit, and now I my video is disabled again. So I don't know. Uh, I was mid typing an answer to a question when Zoom decided to uh, stop working. So let me. Um, I actually am not able to see the questions that were ans uh, asked before my Zoom crashed. Um, do you mind? <laughs> reading them, Joe? Maybe yeah, so the first together. question is uh, from Zandi Wright, and it's for video transcript annotations. Do you expect to expand beyond other video hosting player platforms beside YouTube, maybe to the native video players in each LMS? And in short, yes. Uh, we're actually taking a look at a couple of different providers right now and working pretty closely with them. Uh, we started with YouTube because it's been our most requested feature, but uh, Zandi, I know we talked pretty regularly outside of this. I'll send you a note and talk to you about what the roadmap looks like. We're hoping to have at least one or two more video services that we can cover by uh, spring semester, but it'll all depend on some of the uh, backend work that's required. Uh, the second question was, we have some students using Windows 11 who are noticing a glitch. Uh, there's a 30 to 60 second delay before annotations appear, which disconcerts the user. Are we aware of this issue and might it be resolved in the near future? Uh, Christy, it looks like you were typing back on this one before. Who did you? 
Yeah, so I was in the midst of typing a response, I think, when Zoom booted me. So my apologies for that. I was hoping the person who typed this question could reach out to our support team. Um, and I'll put our support inbox in here um, with more details. Uh, and we are going to check in with them to see if there is an, a known issue about that. Okay. And, um, okay. Um, it looks like I can now see the questions. <laughs> um, all right, so. Uh, so to two-week hypothesis course, customers cost money for customers. They do not. And there's a registration link that we'll be embedding in the deck that we'll be sharing to all the folks who attended this call today. So as long as you registered, on the uh, for the webinar, you will get that probably in the next 24 hours. We'd love to have you there. Quite a few more questions in here. Um, what should we cover next, Christy? Um, so I want to look at, um, someone asked about, Robert asked about tagging student annotations when we reply to them. Uh, we can add a tag, but it's an orphan and we cannot use it for the class group page. Yeah, so the tag feature that we have currently is more like a way to label annotations um, and filter annotations by certain topics. It's not a way to necessarily bring someone back into the conversation. Um, we're thinking, I think you're discussing here more of like an at mention, like can you uh, like at a student and get have them have a notification so they'll know that someone replied to them um this is something we've heard a lot of feedback about and we're hoping to work on that in uh the uh, the coming academic year as well um so that one was good. um the jstor integration has a top ribbon that takes user to the previous slash next to JSTOR article and it takes the student out of hypothesis. Yes, that is how everybody sees that. Um, one of the anonymous questions asked, um, it's very similar to how websites work with hypothesis. So if you've ever used a, a URL of a website with hypothesis, you can't click on a link from that URL because um, it will take you to another page. So you'll just want to let your students know uh, along with websites when they're annotating a JSTOR article, they don't want to click on the uh, top bar there. Um, regarding the um, accepting terms and conditions when selecting JSTOR, I apologize if I have communicate, miscommunicated any information about the behavior there. Um, if you could send that screenshot uh, into our support team, again, the support um, email is available in the chat. Uh, that would be super helpful. Um, but there is no new contract being created with the JSTOR integration. Um, it's all aligned. Uh, you're being signed in with your school information, um, and it is aligned with your school contract. Um, but thank you for that question as well. And again, the screenshot would might be helpful there. Um, and then Henry's comment about, uh, have we considered enabling annotation of pages within each learning management system? Um, so we have heard that request for Canvas pages, the ability to annotate Canvas pages. Um, I can make sure that is added to our feature requests, um, but it's not currently on our roadmap that I'm aware of. So I think that answers all of the questions I saw in the Q&A. Um, I'll let, I'll, I'll kind of hang in a, a couple other moments and see if anyone else has any questions. Um, and sorry again about the weird, I've never had Zoom just like quit out on me before. I was like, did the webinar end? Where is everybody? <laughs> no, it was just me. <laughs> I ended. <laughs>
And we did get a question from Kelly about uh, folks who are using the Chrome extension and um, are these workshops appropriate for faculty who use that? So most of our workshops are LMS specific. And so you may not have all of the features that you'd be using in the free version of the tool. We do have a fantastic knowledge base with a lot of resources. And if there are specific questions we can answer for you, feel free to reach out to us. Um, Thea, I see your question about adding files from OneDrive, um, from your corporate OneDrive versus your personal OneDrive. Uh, feel free to reach out to us so we can help you a little bit more with this. Um, I'm going to put the customer success email um, into the chat uh, so you can reach out. It might be a matter of your school specific permissions and your ability to use OneDrive with a corporate account, um, or it might be based on how you're selecting uh, your account. So it depends on your personal um, school information. So reaching out would be the best way to get that answered. All right. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll do you want to hang another minute, Joe, and see if you have any other questions? We, we can give it another minute. Looks like we've got one already. And um, we've got a few, actually. So uh, first comes from Luann, uh, JSTOR, it's uh, the library resource package. So they've got uh, thousands of articles, journals, as well as open education resources. It's typically subscribed through your library. I've always just known them as JSTOR, so I don't know what they stand for in terms of an acronym, but we're happy to send you over some more information about how that works if it's some, not something that you're familiar with, Luann. And uh, I'll leave a note to check in with you afterwards. And then, uh, the next question from Sarah, I think I'll let you take this one, Christian. Yeah, and so Luann, I'm also going to put you, I noticed you also asked a question about the syllabus. Um, so I'm going to put instructions in the uh, chat. We have, we do have sample instructions for folks to annotate the syllabus if you want to check out more about that. Um, but yeah, you can have students you can load your, your PDF in and have your students annotate your syllabus with questions. Um, right now, Sarah asked, can instructors access a way to download all annotations within a single course? This would enable them to isolate and share annotations with individuals should they request them so that they can save them another way. Currently, there's not a way for you to do this on your own. However, if you do reach out to uh, the success or the support team, we can definitely help you uh, get access to those. Um, so, like I said, um, currently can't do this on, on your end. Uh, it is being explored for the future, but um, definitely reach out and, and we can get you those. Uh, and thanks, Lynn, on what JSTOR stands for. Um, great. Oh, I learned something today. Thanks, Luann. <laughs> All right. Well, this probably never happens. I know it doesn't for me, but that's, that's what we've got for you today. So we can give everyone 30 minutes back from their scheduled day. We won't tell anybody if you try to get some work done before somebody else realizes you're free. But uh, we will be sending out a copy of this recording as well as a copy of the deck. Uh, so we're super excited to have any of you all on our workshops through the month of September. Register for Hypothesis Academy. And if you're not yet a customer, the team's happy to help and help you get set up for this fall with our back to school pricing. I want to thank you all so much. I know how busy it is at the beginning of the school year. And especially thank you, Christy, because I think you're probably the busiest person I know right now with all the workshops you're running. Uh, but we really hope you enjoy these new releases and can't wait to hear your feedback. And we'll see you again in a few months for our next product webinar. Thanks, everyone. Hope everyone has a great start to the term. Yeah, that's